So uh, welcome everybody. It's like to everybody that's watching the streams, to everybody that's actually got the program and actually started doing the uh, uh, Alt Space VR experience, some as early as just you know yesterday, uh, downloading it and getting it going. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. It's like uh, my name's Jason E. Street. I'm the DEF CON Group's global ambassador. It's like uh, I'm also uh, their biggest fanboy, uh, un unashamedly so. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about why we've got this uh, this all space VR world going. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the mission about DEF CON groups and uh, the reason why this is all going on. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about um, the whole what brought it about it's like a, and all the people involved in it so it's like because this was definitely a group effort and it was definitely showing exactly the importance of this so uh I, i'm really happy to be here uh it's like this is not the first time i presented in my uh with no pants uh at uh, at defcon i think too uh probably won't be the last uh but i did put on my uh fancy pajama bottoms for this event uh you can't see them but they're there and that's what counts uh, so, uh, I just wanted everybody to know, uh, that, yeah, this has, uh, been quite a year, <laughs> right? It's like, uh, this is not what we expected, uh, to have DEF CON. Uh, I do appreciate the pull on the roof, uh, but this is, uh, literally, uh, not exactly what we were expecting. And so, uh, we adapted. We're hackers. That's what we do. So I'm really thankful for the way that uh, this whole community came together to make this happen, uh, because it did not happen uh, without 100% community involvement from all over the world. Uh, five years ago, uh, DT actually approached me about uh, being the DEF CON Group's global ambassador. And I talked to him, and when, he's, and when I heard about that, and it's like I was, I was dumbfounded. It's like, I was literally just taken aback because it's like, to me, that was a responsibility. That was not just something that like, just a role, it was just a goon. It was like something where it's like, I wanted to go out. I had a mission. And on that day, my mission was to make this a global community. It's like a lot of DEF CON groups were just three digit area codes is how I call it, mostly North America. And it's like that was most of the DEF CON groups for a long time. There were some out way before I got here. The DC 4420 was uh, out and around doing amazing work. It's like uh, and there were other uh, DEF CON groups from uh, around the world that were out there, but I didn't think enough. It's like we needed a global community. And so one of the things that we did was, and one of my missions was to start going and reaching out to other countries. I travel a lot. I go to a different uh, conferences all over the world. And I want to make sure that I'm talking about other local hackers and telling them that they can be part of this. It's like they can actually be uh, part of this community, that it didn't have to stop just at DEF CON. We could actually make this a local community effort. It's like start showing people in your community what hackers really mean, what hackers can really do. Start working amongst yourselves and creating projects and creating uh, different ideas and going with it. That's what... DEF CON groups were about. That's what's so amazing for it to me. So one of the things I did was I started traveling. I started seeing different groups. I started seeing popping them up. It's like the DC uh, 010 in Beijing, the DC 0086 in Beijing. It's like uh, the, the DEF CON group in Hong Kong. It's like Shenzhen. It's like uh, the news hackers in Singapore starting one. It's like seeing the ones forming in India. It's like the 27, uh, Oh crap, 411. It's like uh, Johannesburg. Sorry, Dino. Uh, but it's like, uh, but the, the, the Johannesburg DEF CON group. It's like the, uh, the Durban uh, DEF CON group. It's like seeing all the different DEF CON groups all over. We got DEF CON groups in uh, Saudi Arabia. We've got them in Germany. We've got them uh, all over the world. And it's in Brazil. It's like, I mean, there's every continent, I think, has a DEF CON group. And one of the things that got me the most during this pandemic was the adaptability of hackers. Did we stop? Did we say, this is defeating us, this is gonna be enough. It's like, we don't know what to do. We're just gonna do our job. We're just gonna bow down and we're just gonna just 
not communicate, not be part of a group anymore. We're just going to stay at our house. No. Zoom meetings all over the world started popping up. DEF CON groups all over the world. It's like, they're like, oh, BBCs, we got this. They started communicating. They started getting groups going together. They started communicating. They started uh, working together. And it's so weird that it took an apocalypse to get part of my biggest part of my vision to fruition. But it has. It's like having a lead from San Diego give a talk at Allen's DEF CON group in Australia. That's what we were looking for, to start getting the groups to work together. Stop letting borders dictate who our friends were or who our uh, co-groups uh, were and start working amongst each other. It's like being hackers that way. That was the most important part of all this. It's like, and nothing showed this the most until when we started trying to create a DEF CON groups village. It's like we had uh, people, uh, Side Pocket, Allen, 800XL, TX from the uh, 9111. It's like uh, a lot of the volunteers are from there as well. It's like all this work. It's like Allen from Australia, Mira, who's here, Imler, uh, The Rapture. It's like I started this, uh, a little bit brief history on this group. It's like on this village right here. This only became about because of something that I, I, I just tried to copy that I was so impressed with was the rapture, Sean. It's like created InfoSec Oasis. And their videos are online on YouTube. You should check them out. And he threw together with his friends and organizers. He didn't do it alone either. It's like there was a lot of great co-organizers with him and they created this facsimile of this world that we're, 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 we built on. And he created InfoSec Oasis, which was a virtual conference. And I am telling you, when I went there and I spoke there, for the first time during this whole pandemic, I felt like I was at a con. I felt like I was at a conference. I've done Zoom conferences. I've done uh, WebExes. I've done all the different kinds of virtual conferences. I'm doing air quotes. You can't see it. It's like, okay, that's my closest I can do. I, I did a lot of virtual conferences while we were there. It's like uh, this last year. But going to InfoSec Oasis and seeing everybody, being able to see you guys, it's like, uh, or people, sorry. It's like seeing you people here and knowing that there's people in there listening into the audience matters. For you to be able to see someone actually presenting, someone talking on the stage. It's like, and trust me, when you see talks later, they're going to have more than just one, one slide. It's like, uh, so don't worry about that. It's like, uh, my, my uh, the, when I did the InfoSec Oasis, if you check that on YouTube, I just had cats. I just had different kittens. So this is, you know, about how I roll virtually. So one of the things about it though, was like, I was able to attend and I was able to walk around and I hung out with Grifter and Serbo. And that was so amazing. Cause I was like, I, I walk up to him like, Hey, what's going on? And it's like, we're giving out virtual hugs and it's like, and we're talking and we're there. Even though we're in our different uh, parts of the world, we were there hanging out together. Serbo was like, hey, let's go check out this other world. And Grifter and me were like, sure, why not? Let's go for it, YOLO. And so he takes us to this different world. He takes us to this pub and it's like, and then we're like, all of a sudden we're under Cheyenne Mountain with the Stargate. And it's like, how did this happen? And it's like, you know, we're going through this and it's like, and, and, and Grifter's doing a little joke about aging because we couldn't get back out. We didn't know how to get out of the, uh, out of the, the Stargate chamber. So that was odd. Uh, but that was the shenanigans. That was the fun. And that's what we try to bring here to this DEF CON groups village. There's a pool on the roof. Go check it out. It's like there's a trampoline up there, too, because that's not dangerous. Well, not now, virtually. I mean, let's face it, honestly, all us hackers, we'd probably try it if it was an action in real life, too. But it's like this one's virtually, so it's way better. So it's like, go, go try those out. 
go play around with the 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 dumpster fire. It's like when I saw on the stream yesterday, it was so much. I love the fact when people first started going in, the first thing they started doing was like, let's toss the beanbag chairs over the roof. And I'm like, okay, I should have seen that one coming. That, 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 that's on me. It's like, but it was hilarious because that's what we were doing. We're just exploring and having fun. What can we do? What can we break? What can we see? It's like, and that's totally okay. That's what I wanted. That's what everybody that started this wanted. It's like, out of this whole project, it's like this whole village. It's like, I literally had the least amount to do in this whole thing happening. It's like so many people worked for so many hours in so many time zones. You do realize that these volunteers, it's like, are working through the night in some time zones. It's after two o'clock in the morning in Australia, and Alan's been on on the Discord already working on some of the projects. So it's like the commitment to these people to make sure that there is an event here for you, that there's talks here for you, should not go unrecognized and should not go unnoticed. It's an amazing effort that I have seen, and it is. It has literally made me emotional sometimes seeing the detail and the thought. We talk about uh, the beach balls at LineCon. We've got beach balls. I almost cried when I first saw those, legit. It's like when I saw, and I was having a bad week yesterday, uh, uh, last week anyway. And when I saw those, I saw the effort and the time and the care it took to make those and put them in there was just unbelievable. Having the beanbag chairs, it's like all the little details you're going to see in this uh, uh, world was not slapped together, but crafted to create that experience. A little bit of DEF CON history for you. It's like the ATM out there in front of the lobby, that's an homage to the uh, sketchy ATM that was left in the Rio one year. It's like no one know how, knew how the, the ATM actually showed up uh, in the Rio during DEF CON. And it was uh, defaced with DEF CON on the ATM. That's from DEF CON 13 at the Alexis Park. Someone hacked the ATM or maybe not hacked it. There's a controversy about what happened. It sounds cool if they said they hacked it. It could have been just branding that they put on there. It doesn't matter. It sounds cool if they hacked it. But the ATM at the Alexis Park actually had the DEF CON logos on the screen of the ATM, which really makes you really want to use that ATM to withdraw some money, right? It was hilarious. And there's other homages, there's other little uh, Easter eggs in these worlds for people to find and to see and to experience a little bit of DEF CON. It's like we couldn't give it to you this year. We couldn't give you the full DEF CON experience. It's like, and, and I feel bad about that. And I really wish that this stuff wasn't going on. There's a lot of horribleness going on in this world. But it's like for right now, it's like, let's try to work together and like socialize and try to listen to talks about people trying to make things better. People discovering vulnerabilities that are trying to get them fixed. People that are trying to new ways to do things, to inspire other people to learn more and to do new things. If that's what this conference is about. It's like on the Discord servers. It's like on the different streams. You've got the biohacking village. You've got the lock picking village. It's like, it's like, I'm not telling you. It's like, I want you to stay here and experience this world and experience what it is. I have more people that are on the streams come and join this world and actually see the experience because all I really want is them to feel what I felt when I went to the first uh, InfoSec Oasis. I just want to feel that connection, that they're actually talking to another person. They see the person, that it's not just someone on a keyboard. It's like they actually get to be around there. But there's other streams, there's other discords, there's other parts of DEF CON that you can experience virtually and remotely. It's like, go and check out the car hacking village, the career hacking village. It's like, there's literally a village trying to help you get a job. People talk about, like, how do I get a job in information security? 
DEFCON's providing a village for that. Christian Renner, Kathleen, it's like so many other people there are working on that to help out. So there are so many different places and so many different resources. Don't let this pandemic go to waste. I mean, literally, this is already half a star Yelp review on an apocalypse. It's like, I'm not really pleased with it, and I wish I could talk to the manager. It's like, uh, it's been horrible. But you know what? We go on. We're hackers. We adapt. We improvise. We overcome. And yes, I stole that from a movie. But still, it's good. And it, it, it's part of the hacker credo, I think. It's part of what we do. We make it work. So please, around this village, it's like, you're going to see hiccups. Trust me. You're going to see uh, glitches in this. This isn't perfect. This has only been created in two weeks. This did not exist three weeks ago. This was everybody and all the different groups coming together in two weeks to make this happen. So yeah, it's not gonna go flawlessly, but it's going on and it's gonna keep going till we're done because that's what we're doing. We're committed to this. We wanna make it work. It's like, and we want to provide a way for everybody here to learn, but also socialize. And that's the whole important part, because DEF CON groups is all have been about is socializing, networking, finding others in your area that had the same passions that you do. People talk a lot about DEF CON now, because there's so many people there. They're like, oh my God, there's 30,000 people that go to DEF CON. It's like, I can't see anything. I can't learn anything. I'm like, are you crazy? You have 30,000 opportunities to find someone that has the same passion that you do. DEF CON is no longer just this conference. I'm doing air quotes again. It's like just a conference to attend. DEF CON is a meeting place of minds and individual passions from all over the world to come together and share that. You like nothing but Wi-Fi? You're only interested in Wi-Fi? Mother, there's a Wi-Fi hacking village. You can spend the whole conference in that village and learn nothing but Wi-Fi. You like lock picking? Lock picking village. Social engineering, a social engineering village. So now that 30,000 have become a small pool of people that are in the shame, they're in, the, they're in that area, if they're in the SE village, there's a good chance they like uh, social engineering. If they're in the uh, voting uh, village, they probably like voting uh, or, or voting hacking, right? It's like, so uh, if they're in a village, you know that they're gonna share the same kind of thing. So please, Get out there, enjoy it. I know this was supposed to be a 30 minute talk, but it's like, I don't, I don't plan this. It's like, I rant till I'm done. And it's like, and I don't like repeating myself though I do it sometimes too often. It's like, so just understand this. We're making this DEF CON groups village the best possible presentation, the best possible environment for you. But just like DEF CON, that part doesn't matter. It's what you bring to it. It's what you're bringing to it, what you want to get out of it and what you work to bring uh, uh, out of it and what you share for others. That's what makes it. That's what makes it a worthy experience. That's what makes it a success. So don't just partake of this discord or this DEF CON groups village. Add to it. Have conversations with other people. Go outside your comfort zone. It's like go run to, uh, when you're seeing people in the lobby and they're talking about something, go and talk to them. Do that, in, it's harder at DEF CON, I know, but it's so rewarding because they want to learn too. And they want to share their information too. It's easier here because we're all virtual. So go do that. Take something from here but also leave something, some knowledge, 
a connection with someone else. It's like bring something to this crew. And when you are done with this and when DEF CON is over, find a local DEF CON group in your area and keep it going. Keep that knowledge share going. And I always tell people, if there's not a DEF CON groups in your area, mother would start one. You don't need permission. We're hackers. Start a group. Make it happen. It's like, let's all work together, not just to like make things better in the online world, but also in IRL. So I hope you have a really good uh, DEF CON. I hope you have really good villages. There's a lot more technical and a lot better talks coming up. And it's like, and I think you're going to really enjoy them. It's like, and they're from DEF CON groups from all over the world. Brazil, India, Australia. It's like uh, Colombia, I believe, or Chile. It's like, sorry. It's like, but from everywhere. People sharing knowledge. Not for money, but because of passion. Because that's what they believe in. So let's learn something. It's like, let's go with it. And hopefully we make this a monthly occurrence. I want to keep having DEF CON group global villages. It's like a, a DEF CON group global meetup every month. It's like I, the pandemic has shown us that we can adapt. The pandemic has shown a lot of people a lot of things. We've understood what essential workers are. We've understood how easy it is to work from home. We found a lot of things out, a lot of bad things and a lot of positive things. Let this be one of the positive things that we can have a global meetup of hackers that we can keep working together to make things better. So I'm gonna open it up for eight minutes of questions. It's like, if anybody has any, and if you don't, that's totally okay. Cause let's face it, I've talked a lot. So I'm totally okay with that. Is there any questions? Just do your little raise hand emoji. Okay, that's a clapping. I appreciate the applause. Is there any questions? And that's fine if there's not. Perfect. That's awesome. Okay, well, we're gonna give it a, a small 30 minute break while we get the other speakers prepped and ready. Uh, and once again, Thank you so much for being here. Please bear with us as we go through this uh, uh, this village and, and try to keep it working and keep it uh, afloat. And uh, I will uh, be around. I'm also the camera person right there. Uh, that's why that weird blue person's floating in the uh, sky right there. Uh, so uh, we will be having the, the camera going through. And if whenever you see that person, let them know that they are uh, filming. Uh, and that goes to the DEF CON Discord server and also streaming on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, so people can, uh, after DEF CON, can come and look at, these, uh, look at the village, look at the talks, see what we did here. Because I do not want this to fade away. I want this to stay. I want people to, to remember this and see this, that in two weeks, groups from all over the world made this happen. And it was effing awesome. And a part of that was because of y'all. Not just because of the people that created it, but the people that took the time and effort to show up and be a part of it in the actual all space. Thank you for all of that. Okay, now I'm done. See you later, guys. Wait, hold on, hold on, because this is so much cooler. Drop mic. I'm out. And now I just, like, move sideways off the stage. Fade the music. And boom. And that was pretty interesting. So, I have no idea what you have to say. So, did you guys like the keynote session? If yes, uh, drop me some hearts. Thank you. Um, up next, we have a talk on red teaming.
So um, if anybody has some experience with the same or wants to learn something about how red teaming works or how you can track, uh, how you can set up a ta uh, red team and other stuffs, you can just go in and ask questions to the host and we're gonna have the same presentation anytime sooner. So um, be there. Oh, I'm gonna have a hard time to put that mic on. Oh, okay. That's a success.